In this video, I share with you a preview Kickstarter for League of Dungeoneers. Before we get into today's video, I just want to share with you what the GGGG is for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of December of 2021, we have this printed and painted Druid's Palace from Printable Scenery with Rise of the Halflings Kickstarter that's going on right now. And also, we have three all-in pledges for the Zone Quantum Tempest Kickstarter that's also going on right now. I do have videos for both of those, so check out my video playlist and you can see more details there. Also use the link below to go to my Patreon page to see what other GGGGs there are for this month. So Michael Lundsted from Sweden as the designer reached out to me this past summer and asked if I was interested in reviewing his game and I did and make sure again you check out that video because that is going to give you a really good overview of how the game plays and what some of the dynamics are. So make sure you check out that video if you want to see and know more about gameplay. But really quickly, this is an old school style RPG dungeon crawler mixed in with Warhammer Quest. So I've always been looking for a Warhammer Quest replacement and have been pretty disappointed by the ones that GW has produced recently, especially Curse City was really, really bad. And really, I think League of Dungeoneers really is taking that spot because it has the satisfaction of leveling up your characters and being able to battle and being able to upgrade your equipment and it's crunchy. So Michael doesn't shy away from the fact that this is not a streamlined modern game, but it actually is going back to old school style pen and paper RPG in the sense that there are charts that you're cross-referencing. There are roles for all kinds of stuff that's going on. So it isn't a simplified rule set. And I didn't think I was going to like it that much, but surprisingly, I love this game. And I preferred actually to play through this game more so than Chronicles of Drunagor, which had delivered at about the same time. And I think it's because the level of difficulty of this game uh, is such that um, you are incrementally improving your character. It isn't super easy to do that. And therefore, the challenge that I found was sort of the right level that kept me motivated where I was like, oh, if I get just a little bit more gold, then I can uh, repair my armor or my weapons or get that uh, thing that I was uh, going to make opening doors a little bit easier. So in many ways, sort of the incremental improvements that you're making with your party or with your hero really hooked me in and wanted me to keep going on this adventure. So that really is something that is exciting for me. I really like it a lot. And I know that Michael, since that review has been iterating more and more and trying to improve the game, receiving a lot of feedback from the community and incorporating it within the rule book. So he's been consistently improving the rules as we go along. Also since then, a lot of us have asked him if there was a possibility for printed materials because the original is a $10 PDF print and play, which is the rule book. And you know, all of the map tiles you had to print out yourself and mount. Now, of course, for me as Gaming Geek, my whole channel is about 3D printing terrain. I chose to use Kraken Studios tiles in order to play this game. If you want to see that video, go ahead and check that out here. But a lot of people were just using not 3D printed parts, but boards. And so they were asking for professionally printed, especially on cardstock or on cardboard um, printed tiles. And as you can see here, there is a lot of tiles with this game. This is all double sided. So having taken that feedback, Michael did go and do research on what was a cost effective way. And that is why this Kickstarter was born with the idea of providing not just a print and play, but actually a whole box set that gives you everything that you need in order to play this game. I do have a interview with Michael at the end of the video. So use the timestamps below if you want to skip to that because he has some great things to say about where this idea come, came from and how he got involved in creating this game. Uh, it's just a one man show in the sense that he came up with the entire rule set himself. He posted it, uh, became way more popular than he ever thought. And so he's been iterating on it. And now here we are 
about to do a Kickstarter. And again, this Kickstarter is actually, we're, we're way ahead of the game because it is gonna be launching around March of 2022. So we're a couple of months away. And because of that, anything that you see here in my video, this is a prototype version and this can change. And in fact, Michael is still iterating on the rule set. Just know that whatever you see here uh, can change. In many ways, I feel like Kickstarter is exactly for someone like Michael and for a project just like this. Instead of CMON Kickstarters or Awaken Realms, they're already successful companies or game companies, and really they're using crowdfunding as a pre-order for these games that they're making. But when I think about my pledges for the original Gloomhaven campaign and then for also Madara, uh, both those games became really successful and never would have been printed through a traditional company because they were too large scale, but because they were successful on Kickstarter, they really launched. In the same way, I'm hoping that League of Dungeoneers is something that will help out Michael as an independent game designer who made this as a, his own passion project. He has a day job, he has kids, he has a girlfriend, but he's spending evenings uh, iterating and working on this because he's a passionate gamer just like you and me. And I just love that and I think that deserves our support. So make sure you use the links below to go and sign up to be notified once the Kickstarter does launch, but also spread the news about this Kickstarter that's going to come along and we really, really want it to be successful. So let's talk a little bit about what you are going to get in some of the components. So first off, you got this hardback rule book that has all of the information that you need in order to be able to play the game as well as the quest and his uh, first expansion that he created, Silver City. So all that is found here in the rule book. He also separated out all of the monsters. So now there is a separate bestiary. And this way he can also expand once he puts new monsters in the future. So now it's a separate book and it has all of the charts and stats for all the potential monsters that you're gonna run into. But not only that, he created monster cards. And this is something that I wanted because cross-referencing on a chart was a little bit difficult to do. So just by having all of the stats available on a card really makes it easy to work with the enemies. As I mentioned before, you're gonna get all of the tiles that you need. Now, the thing about League of Dungeoneers is that it's flexible enough so that each of the hallways or the rooms don't have to be exactly that configuration. That's why you can use, if you already have tile set at home or like what I do, 3D print a dungeon set or for other dungeon crawlers, then you can go ahead and use that and it doesn't have to be exactly the same number of squares in a room or a hallway. That's why it's flexible. And in fact, he even includes this deck, this standard playing card deck so that you can use these if you have custom dungeon tiles that you're gonna be using. But having said that, I think if you are a dungeon crawl player, having this set of dungeon tiles will work with a ton of other games. I think they're really fantastic. If you're playing D&D or other dungeon crawlers, these tiles can function as a workable dungeon set. You're also gonna get some of this terrain, these doors uh, as standees, the open ones as well as the closed ones. So if you need sort of an expanding dungeon set, this is a great way to go ahead and dive into that. Other things that you're receiving is you have travel events, both off-road and road, so that you can randomly uh, draw and see things that happen while you're traveling. Uh, room cards, which is probably the other printed resource that I wanted the most other than the monster cards. And that is typically you are drawing just from a regular playing deck and then you have to cross reference. Oh, I drew a two of diamonds and then see what kind of room that is. But what this does is it simplifies it because when you open a door and draw the card, it shows you which room you need and you can just directly pull it from your tiles and set it down. So this is fantastic. You have the three decks of the various levels of treasure that you can draw upon, especially as they are randomized as well. So just shuffle the deck and draw. You also have all of the chits and tokens that you need. That's something in my original video that I made myself, but now that's gonna be all available for you. And then you also have these stands, not only for the doors, but you also have these standees of the monsters as well as the heroes. Michael is still deciding whether or not that is going to be an add-on since most of us gamers have a bunch of miniatures that we're gonna proxy in anyway. So he's still deciding upon that, but I think it's great that if you aren't 
a big dungeon crawler and this might be your first dungeon crawl uh, box set that you're getting then you can buy into having these standees so that you don't have to bother trying to get miniatures or to paint them so that's a fantastic resource as well you have these ai cards and again these were printable as a resource and i did print them out but these are all printed pre-printed for you and then you have a ton of sheets these are all resources and again i printed out all of these on my own when i was playing playing because they're great aids but this is a cheat sheet of the most commonly referenced charts that you're going to need and then this is the new party sheet where you can keep track of everyone's statuses and their hit points as well as the threat level as you're going through the dungeon and the party morale and also these are still the references to the rooms but since you have the room cards this you don't need to use this anymore and then uh, search tables as well so all of the resources that you need that normally we had to print out ourselves are going to be part of this box set which is fantastic and then here are some character sheets so i don't know how much the pledge levels are going to be i'll probably do a follow-up video once it gets closer to march as the campaign gets started well, I might walk through it again, but really this is everything that you need in order to play. Oh, I forgot to mention the weapons cards as well that you can put right next to your character sheet so that you know what the effects of your weapons and armor are. The only thing that I don't see is your dice, but most people, again, have RPG dice anyway, and you can pick the styles that you want. So I'm actually happy that they're not including dice because I have millions of RPG dice anyway. So let's go ahead and go over to the interview and hear from Michael himself. So we have here Michael Lundstedt from Sweden. He is the person who came up with uh, no longer being called Just Dungeoneers, but is now League of Dungeoneers. And uh, it's great to have you. Thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed. I think it's a treat for my viewers, just especially to hear from your creative mind, especially since none of us have made our own games yet. So it's fantastic just to hear from you where your inspiration is and what your thoughts are and some of the changes that have happened since you originally published this. So mm -hmm. let, me, let me just start off just by asking you, how did you even come up with the idea or how were you inspired to create your own rules and game for a dungeon crawler? First off, I've been making games all my life uh, since I was a kid. I've never published anything, but I made them for myself. I ordered Dungeon Universalis when it was on Kickstarter about a year ago. And um, it's quite a long waiting time and I had nothing that really fit the bill for what I wanted to play. So I decided then, let's make my own game. And uh, that's where it all started, basically. And previous, um, have you played a lot of different dungeon crawlers? Have you had experience with Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, not Dungeons and Dragons. We had uh, a Swedish version called Drakar och Demoner, which is Dragons and Demons, basically, which I played a lot during my youth. Uh, basically, every night we play this. So uh, that is part of the inspiration for this game as well. Uh, but I've played that, and I played Warhammer Quest, and I played Hero Quest, Advanced Hero Quest a bit. So I've tried some of them out. Of course, uh, Descent as well, and uh, Dungeon Saga. And, yeah, yeah, and obviously, especially the tiles that you have drew a lot of inspiration from Warhammer Quest. It looks like. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean that that is a, a jewel that game. Basically, I, I really love that game, and it's. Uh, also part of the inspiration, for sure. When you first made the game, did you have the intention of publishing or were you just playing with your friends? Uh, I was just playing with myself, basically, or making for myself. Uh, I was intending to play with my friends, uh, but I started off by myself and I realized that this could actually be something. Uh, so I decided to publish it at drive through RPG and hoping to sell one copy because then I could <laughs> title myself as a game designer. In the pandemic also, it's difficult to play with your friends. So it's solo was not a must for this game. So how long did it take for you to create the rule set? Actually, it, the first edition, the first uh, took me about one and a half, two months, maybe. Uh, but uh, I had a version before that that was more tightly 
design and based on, on Drakkar and the Bonner, uh, Dragons, Demons. Uh, so the play testing had been done in a way already before that. So it was just tweaking and fixing things and making things better. And you published the first iteration of Dungeoneers. When, when was that? I think it was in maybe April, May, May 21, I think, yeah, May. So only about eight months ago then? Yep. <laughs> it's been a crazy ride. <laughs> So obviously, um, you reached out to me over the summertime to see whether or not I would do a review. And in fact, I had heard about your game from one of my Patreon supporters because he had okay. purchased the PDF at that point and said, you need to check out this game. So when you reached out to me, I had already heard about it. And when I really looked into the game, honestly, Michael, I was a little bit skeptical because the trajectory of most dungeon crawlers has to has been to become simpler with the mm -hmm. rules and streamlined and i found that i was preferring a lot of dungeon crawlers that had more streamlined rules rather than complicated rules so when i first read the initial introduction of dungeoneers <laughs> i was thinking well maybe i'm not going to like this game too much but interestingly enough i really like the game a lot and Maybe it was touching on some of the nostalgia of when I played Warhammer Quest, when I played mm -hmm. original um, first and second edition Dungeons and Dragons, because it did have all of those rules within. And I remember the encumbrance rules. I remember all of the different roles that you had to make, how very detailed it was. And at first I thought I wouldn't like it, but I found after I played it, I really liked it a lot. And so can you explain a little bit why maybe someone who is used to more modern streamlined rules, why they might like something like um, League of Dungeoneers now? Oh, uh, that's a difficult question. But um, for me, uh, I've never really been into this streamline because I, I think it's back to the the and Dragons of Drakkar the Bone. For me, that I want to get back to that feeling. And I'm not really fond of the streamlining. If you look at Descent, for instance, you have a, a character that is basically, you have two sides on, on a, a sheet, basically. So you, you don't get to do your own development. Uh, and I think it's uh, all those details, making those decisions. I think it's, it's uh, I love it. And I think there are people out there who, who just like me, think this is great fun. Uh, streamlining is, is good in a way because it's easy to set up, it's quick play and you can put it away and it doesn't take forever to play. But uh, it doesn't really, for me, it doesn't scratch that itch. I need those details. And I think there are people who might, might fancy that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I found that um, the game is actually very flexible. And for those of you who are watching, if you find that you don't want to play with all of the rules, you don't have to. So in many ways, uh, League of Dungeoneers is giving you the full rule set rather than many games. What they do is they give you just the simplified version. And then with an expansion, you'll get more and more rules. But with this game, you're getting the entire rule set from Michael. And if you don't want to use the encumbrance rules, if you don't want to have your armor slowly degrade, you can choose not to do that. Obviously, there's a little bit of balancing issues because it makes the game a little bit easier. But I feel like there's enough flexibility with the rule set that you can decide if you don't want to use a, you know, a particular rules. But uh, this, what I like about the rule set is it's giving you everything and all of the options at once. Yeah. That sums it up pretty well, I think. It's, I've had a hard time to to cut things off. I just add more and more as I see this. I want this as well. I need this as well. And I just I've added it in. And and I think that's one of the things that we like as consumers of dungeon crawlers is when we find a system, we sort of do want expansions. We do want a little bit more. And I think in the short period of time that. Uh, Dungeoneers and now League of Dungeoneers is coming out, you've actually made more uh, content. You've already made an expansion, a city's expansion. And obviously with this Kickstarter, you're refining. It's coming out you know, um, into more um, 
polished of a product for all of us. Obviously, now instead of us needing to print out all of the components, we're able to get it in one package. So the development that you've done, I've been very impressed how quickly you have come from past April with just a PDF and an option to print on demand to now having all the components that you need to play the game. Yeah, I've been quite busy <laughs> every single night, basically. I've been working on this. So I don't want to count the hours. It's uh, crazy, but I have an understanding girlfriend and I have a nice and understanding kids. So it's... Are you surprised? You know, you initially said when you posted, you were hoping for one, uh, yeah. <laughs> one person to buy. So are you surprised at how many people have really enjoyed uh, Dungeoneers and were encouraging you to come out with this Kickstarter? Indeed, indeed I was. So it's, it's, uh, the community is very, very loving. So I've got lots of praise and there's almost no, no one has been complaining or maybe they, they found some issues and, and given feedback, of course, and that's just great. But lots of people have been very supportive and positive and it's, it's a kick actually. It's uh, really fun. It's, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about some of the details for League of Dungeoneers. And let's first of all just um, hear a quick explanation why the name changed from Dungeoneers to League of Dungeoneers. Uh, well, it's, it's twofold. Basically, it's uh, uh, the game is evolving. So I would like to make a, a differentiation between the PNP version and the Kickstarter version. So that's one part. The other part is that there is a game called Dungeoneers, a computer game, which I think uh, might cause confusion. And there is also a, I think Wizard of the Coast have a Dungeoneer series game, if I'm not mistaken, which also is pretty close. So I would like to make a distinction so that we don't confuse things and mix things up. And so can you share with us a little bit about how, because originally I don't think you were thinking about doing a Kickstarter or providing all of the components. So what motivated you or helped you um, get to the place where this is the set that we're going to get from this Kickstarter? Well, uh, first of all, it was uh, the customers who bought the game who asked for physical components. They wanted monster cards. They, they asked for physical tiles instead of having to print them, print them by themselves. And the, the print and play version comes with about 50 tiles. So it's quite a lot of work to get it to the table. Um, so I was thinking about just selling the tiles initially. And I made some print, uh, some test prints in my local city, but uh, the cost was too high, basically. Uh, and at that point, I decided to maybe I should check into what it would cost to make it abroad and China specifically. And, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, the price was seemingly better. Uh, it was it felt doable, and at the same time, with the customers uh, asking for this, I felt okay. Let's let's try. Yeah, that's the reason I think it's uh, and it's a, it's a fun project as well. It's, I've never done something like this before, so it's a, it's a challenge. Yeah, and as a person who has played the game, I really do find all of the components something that I wished with the first iteration that I had. And in fact, uh, in my video, I told people that I created my own monster cards because I found yeah. that a lot easier to reference than the table. And I am glad to see that you did create uh, monster cards um, for all of the monsters. Uh, that's fantastic that there are cards for all of the treasures. Um, and I just love these weapon cards as well. Um, and that there are smaller ones so that you can place them right next to your character sheet. So these, yeah. all of the pieces feel like they are the ones that I would choose to make if oh. um, I were just printing and playing. I was already starting to make those anyway. So this makes it so much easier for anyone who wants to get into the game. But again, like you said, doesn't have the time to print out all of the parts uh, that this makes it all available in one box. It makes it all available. It makes the game also much faster. And when it comes to those small cards, there's also a set of spell cards coming for the, uh, the casters, the, the enemy magic casters. Uh, so there will be weapons, armors, and spells as well. So you can easily make your adversary enemies uh, with well, wizards and some such. 
my question is if a person um, doesn't want to get the box, are they still going to be able to just buy the PDF or the just the rule book? It's not completely decided yet. I'm still uh, working things out. The thing is, is that I have a minimum order that I have to, to make to the plant, of course, and then the factory. Um, so I need to, to fulfill that minimum order. But at the same time, I want to make the, the pledges as flexible as possible. So I, I will have to leave that question open for now, but I'm trying to satisfy as many people as possible. And are there going to be stretch goals in this campaign? Since it looks like everything that's going to be included is already in the box. <laughs> yeah, there, there's going to be stretch goals, uh, but mostly on uh, quests and campaigns uh, and such things. So it will expand on, on the experience, but maybe not so much physical components, uh, but, but I'm looking into maybe better quality of cards, etc. might be a possibility as well, but this is still being worked on. Okay. Now, I was really impressed with the quality of the tiles. The, this is actually really thick cardboard, and so yeah. it really rivals the uh, quality and thickness of a lot of other games. And so I was very impressed with that. I, I don't anticipate this warping and the fact that it's all double-sided. I feel like this is a great set of tiles to use for any dungeon crawler or for Dungeons and Dragons or any RPG, that this is a great set just to have. I think it turned out really well. It's, uh, I'm uh, super happy with the quality. There will be some changes. Uh, some tiles will be printed with different motives on, on uh, the, different sides, uh, because some of those tiles cannot be placed on the, the table anyway at the same time because of the rules. So I will save some space by, by making them on the same piece of cardboard. Okay. Well, it looks fantastic. And one of the surprises that I didn't know was happening is that you are providing standees. Now, most of us who have played lots of games, obviously we have tons of miniatures that I can use. But the fact that you're also providing standees, I think, is a great option for people who might not be, uh, not might not have a lot of miniatures like we do. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, I'm collaborating with Two guys, it's uh, Kev's Lounge and uh, Diego Paper Mage, uh, who, uh, who are doing these uh, miniatures or these standees, and they are absolutely stunning. I'm a miniature man myself. I have thousands of metal or plastic miniatures, but I was really surprised by the the, the artwork and, and the, it ties it all together. And as, like you said, if you don't have miniatures, this is a good option. Probably it will be as an add-on to the standees for those who have already have all these miniatures by themselves. Uh, but it's it's a good option to to make the game complete, and there will be some almost 350 standees. What about the future of League of Dungeoneers? Uh, obviously, to, let's assume and let's think positively that the Kickstarter will be a success. You'll be able to mm -hmm. send out this second iteration of League of Dungeoneers. What are your thoughts and plans, uh, long term wise, in terms of maybe expansions or additional content? Yeah, I have lots of lots of ideas, but I haven't allowed myself to go that far yet because I'm still terrified of, of uh, March and, and the, see if we succeed or not. But I have some ideas on expansions, both with uh, content in the, in the current location of the world, the fantasy world, but also expanding on that. So I have I have some some ideas coming. So yeah. if this succeeds, there will probably be more for sure. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. And one of the feedback that I gave you or when I did my original video was hoping for more um, narrative story plot and storylines. Uh, that, mm -hmm. that would be awesome. So really looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, I hope, hopefully I can provide this. There will be more with the initial release. There will be another campaign uh, that uh, continues with the last one ended. Uh, it will be about 10 quests campaign. And uh, then we have the stretch goals with at least three campaigns planned as well. So there will be lots of quests if we, if we succeed with this. I know that there is a Kickstarter a sign up page so that you will be alerted once the Kickstarter campaign launches. And I'm glad mm -hmm. to see that there's a lot of people already signed up for that. So hopefully yeah. that's a sign that the Kickstarter will be successful. 
But what are some other ways that if my viewers wanted to stay connected with what's going on, how can they get connected? And again, I'll provide links in the descriptions below for anyone who's interested. Yeah. There is, uh, first of all, there is a homepage where you can sign up for the newsletter and uh, maybe you can post the link, uh, as you said. Uh, then we have a Facebook group as well uh, with, uh, I think we're at 250 people discussing the game. And uh, finally, there is a BGG site as well. Uh, and I post the newsletters on the BGG site and the Facebook group as well. Although the quickest way to get them is by signing up for the newsletter. Mm. It's uh, normally almost a week ahead to get it that way. Okay, great. So definitely, guys, if you are interested in keeping up with what's going on, um, go ahead and sign up. And also, there are a number of other YouTubers who have reviewed the game and have played the game and done some playthroughs as well. So for you to have more of a sense of what's going on, make sure to check out those links that I'm providing as well. Uh, any other final uh, notes or things you might want to say to our viewers, Michael? Um, hmm, good question. Well, there, there are some new features that I think is, is uh, really good with this one, uh, with this new version. One that I've been, I've been trying out lately is the new initiative way. Uh, instead of uh, going for the standard uh, I go, you go, uh, there is a, a chit pull version. I call it chit pull. I'm not sure if that's a good English word, but but uh, you randomize uh, the movement between heroes and monsters, which really puts a new tension to the game. Uh, normally, if you fight a troll, you have all your four heroes. You can make eight strikes. You know. I can go all offensive because the troll will probably be dead by the end of the turn, but now you don't know. So maybe your first hero will strike and then the troll will strike. So you have to be more defensive and it brings more tactics to the game. So I think that's, uh, I'm really happy with that addition. addition sorry. Uh, but it will be an optional rule. Uh, if that's an option. And there are some other cool things coming as well, but I'll leave that for the newsletters. Okay. That sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Michael, for um, chiming in on my channel. We are really looking forward to the Kickstarter happening, and I am really hoping that it will be successful. I think I'm pretty sure that it will be because I know that there is a lot of excitement around it. And so, thank you so much. I know it's a risk, and I know it's a time investment to set up a Kickstarter campaign to be working on all this. So thank your children, your girlfriend, for the time <laughs> that you're spending on this. Hopefully, uh, when your kids get older, they can also play uh, this game with you as well. Yeah, hopefully, I think so too. Thank you for having me. And we will see you next time. Yep, okay. So there you have it. That is the campaign preview Kickstarter. So far of what we know of League of Dungeoneers, I'll keep you informed as things are changed or when final components might be coming out, but definitely I'm excited about this Kickstarter and excited to support individual developers like Michael and want to make sure that we support him as much as we can. Michael has also promised some all-in pledges for GGGGs in March, so make sure you tune in. Uh, subscribe to my channel as I will continue to have follow-up videos. The print and play PDF is still available, so use the links below if you want to pick that up. Again, $10 just to preview it and see if this is something that you're excited about. It's just not going to be these updated rules once these are finished. Thanks so much for watching. Happy gaming. We'll see you next time.